Good morning, guys. I'm actually doing this in the fucking morning. How's everyone today? Uh, welcome to the thing where I talk for like maybe 45 minutes to an hour about nothing and... <laughs> Welcome to It's a Matter of Fact Podcast, I'm your host MTFM, formerly known as Matt the Funny Man. If you don't know who I am, I'm that guy that uploads videos on the internet. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Hope you guys had a wonderful week. My week's been alright. I'm just sitting right here, uh, drinking iced coffee and eating a delicious breakfast sandwich. Oh man, it feels good to have my day off. This was a very, very long four uh, four days, and you would think four days isn't that bad because that's like one less day, and I don't have to worry about working five days a week before my weekend. But it's meh, big meh. Uh, just to give you guys an update, I'm pretty sure Pat is gonna want to know an update. Uh, we are about halfway done with the setup. The desk is completed. Um, it was a little bitty complicated because I've never put a desk together before, and boy, it was, uh, it was a long four and a half hours, almost five hours, So I want to say I started like around three-ish, and it was like maybe around 7.30, 7.40 when I finished, <laughs> but it, it was... I would say towards the end was rough because at one point when I had the uh, the top part screwed in, all the bars like set up, the top part wasn't matching up with the screws, and I'm like, wait, is is this a thing? Are the because cause, you know, it's one of those things where because when um I was getting closer and closer towards the end, I'm thinking like, man, I have a lot of screws left over. I'm thinking, oh fuck. I'm like, you, normally, like when you're building shit with Legos, there's no such thing as an extra piece. So in my mindset, I'm thinking, oh, fuck, did I just miss some screws and not just pay attention? But it was one of those things where uh, you have to have a certain side facing in order for it to line up correctly. Thankfully, it wasn't the entire thing. It was because one end of it wasn't flipped, so it didn't line up with the other pieces so once i flipped one of the sides it all lined up and i'm like oh thank christ but it, it caused a lot of unscrewing and re-screwing over and over that can really be taken out of context but yeah it was uh it, it was i got the hard part out of the way so probably tuesday is when i'll um start setting up the pc and stuff I would have kept going and continued, but it was already late in the afternoon in, and into the evening, and I really didn't have that much to eat that day because me and the wife went out that day to the arcade and shit, so didn't really eat that much. So besides being hungry and slightly annoyed only because of the fact that me being a little bit slow was the cause of the desk taking so long, but... Yeah, I'm like, fuck, man, I gotta go to work for the next few days. Because this was on a Tuesday, so I'm thinking, okay, I worked on this desk damn near all afternoon. And I gotta work for the next four days. I'll just finish the PC next week. I'll, I'll set everything up and all that on my next next Tuesday when, you know. And I already told my wife, I said, hey, just let you know, Sunday, I'm not doing a goddamn thing. I'm probably going to do the podcast, maybe record one or two uh, videos for the gaming channel, but other than that, I'm not fucking doing anything. I'm fucking relaxing tomorrow. I'm chilling. I'm playing Elden Ring. I do want to actually talk about that just for like a quick minute. Is that as someone, like, I never played Dark Souls 1, never played Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls, apparently, because I talked to Gavin about this the other day, because he's been... He's been uh, watching my progress, and he told me yesterday that apparently, based on my achievements in Dark Souls, I was about halfway through the game, and I was like, what, really? I said, I feel like I didn't accomplish shit, 
He said, no, dude, you fucking, you're damn near a little bit more past the halfway point. I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, why'd you stop playing? I'm like, it got too hard. <laughs> I don't remember getting that far in Dark Souls 3. But to be honest, compare the memories I have of playing Dark Souls 3 versus playing Elden Ring now. I feel like Elden Ring's a little bit more forgiving than Dark Souls 3 was. But I'm about... uh, I'd say I'm probably maybe... I'm not even at the halfway point of Elden Ring. Because it's like, what, like a fucking 800 hour game? Actually, now I'm curious. I'm going to look up uh, how long to beat. Actually, I need to fucking play Boulder's Gate. I haven't played Boulder's Gate in, in like a week and a half. I love fucking play Boulder's Gate. Because I've always... uh, Wow, that was the first fucking... Th Dude, they know. Okay, so the main story is like 59 hours. The main story plus doing extra shit's 100 hours. And working to complete it averages around 133 hours. So hey, halfway there. <laughs> and that's not including um DLC, of course. Uh, but it's it, it's an adventure. It, it's It's meant to be hard. It's very hard. And... Compared to other games I've played in the past growing up, it, it it's very, very different. It's like, oh, fuck, man, I keep dying. It's like, yeah, dude, that that's the point. You keep dying, that means it's not working. Try something else. And I'm like, that game, like, I've never had a game like that. Where it's like, oh, normally the boss fight is scripted. And you just have to learn the boss and, and and yeah but no this is like hey man if you're doing this over and over and you've been at this boss fight for like three hours then you need to try something else it's not gonna work versus any other game it's like oh yeah it'll work you just need to time it better you know that type of shit but um it's it, it's an adventure it, it's quite the adventure. Um, I am very proud of myself, though. Because uh, the developer of Elden Ring, the, there's like kind of like... A, not like a... I guess like a mini-boss, you would say. The Sentinel Tree guy. Like the, the fucking hardest fucking boss to like... Hey, you're new to this game. Here's a fucking hard boss. Um... From what I was told, I want to say it took me maybe, I mean, if you include the time I, like, walked away and leveled up a little bit and came back to the fight, uh, like, maybe two hours? Because, like, maybe, like, 40 minutes I kept dying, I'm like, okay, this ain't working. Maybe, it may, let me level up a little bit and then come back. So, for, like, a half an hour, I was just, like... Killing, leveling up, learning uh, new moves and shit like that. And then came back and beat him. So roughly about maybe two hours. Maybe two and a half. And I was told, hey, you know uh, when other people have streamed this game? It would take them like six hours to beat that boss. And I'm like, oh. So I'm good at video games. <laughs> I'm almost 35 and I still got it. And yesterday that happened again. I don't remember how long I was in that boss fight, but I was completely under leveled. And uh yeah. If you guys follow me on uh Discord actually, I do have a lot of uh screenshots that I took. And actually, I should probably take a screenshot every single time I play just to kind of I should make like an uh a server like just as like my Elden Ring diary like Day number 475. Oh. Day number 475. As I reach... As I try to reach the top to become Elden Lord. <laughs> and just follow it up with screen caps. That'd be funny. 
No, it's been very fun. Very, very fun. It, it's it's a completely different experience than what I'm used to. You know, you're used to going to point A to point B versus this. It's like, hey, you can go you can go to fucking point D if you want to. You're going to be extremely underleveled, but, I mean, hey, you might luck out. And, of course, it, it's, it, it really is RNG-based. It, it it's a I this is like the first game I've ever played that's it's a mix of hey you got to be good but it's also just fucking RNG because like you can be the fucking best player in the fucking world and a boss will just pull an attack right out of their ass and you you fucking get one shotted. So I, I would say it's been a, it's been a very good experience because it's it's never been. It's always been a mix of skill and RNG. And, like, I've never played a game that, like, that was well-balanced like that. Type of thing. I'm gonna say, I need to take a bite of this breakfast sandwich because I'm fucking dying. Or not, I'm not literally dying, but I'm fucking hungry. Ooh, it is so good and tasty. I think it's next week I gotta go to the dentist again. To get uh, the rest of my mouth cleaned, because apparently my mouth my mouth was so. F oh yeah, I think I talked about this already. Or I got to go to the hygienist twice. They did one side, then they got to do the other. That's how fucked up my teeth are. Even though, from what I was told, a part of it is my genetics. Because I talked to my uh, I talked to my brother about it. He was just like, oh yeah, man, my teeth are fucked up too. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, dude. It half of it's genetics. He's like, all of us, like, had fucked up teeth. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, that's good to know. He's like, yeah, even Dad had fucked up teeth. I'm like, oh. So it's good to know he fucking runs in the family. <laughs> even though, granted, to this day, I'm, I'm happy. Well, I'm not happy because, you know, fucking getting your teeth pulled and fucking sawed down. It's like little vampire teeth aren't exactly the best thing in the world, but... If I had my original teeth, goddamn, I would have the biggest fucking gap you can fucking... I could smuggle shit in my teeth. Just looking at my kid pictures when I'm, like, smiling and shit. Versus now, it's actually a... I don't want to say normal, but it's more artificial looking. And, you know, my teeth are still there. My teeth are under... They're underneath these, these uh, crowns. You know, so my teeth are still there. It's just my teeth have jackets on because <laughs> it's constantly cold. <laughs> but then after that, I want to say like maybe like in a month, that's when I'll have to start getting uh, my bottom row pulled. That's not going to be fucking fun at all because I think it's like two teeth, then three teeth, then three more fucking teeth. Then that's when I'm gonna get a temporary, uh, temporary uh, thing put on, or temporary dentures. And then after that, um, I think like like gum cleaning or whatever. Then after that, that's when I'll get uh, uh, the partial dentures. I wonder if I'm gonna be talking different. Like, if I'm going to be talking like that. Like, hey guys, welcome to another episode this a matter of fact. <laughs> but it is, it is what it is. And then, after that, it's, I'm done. My teeth will be cleaned up. Gunk will be taken off. Then my fucking, what... Like, my 20-year adventure with my fucking teeth will finally come to an end. Even though for, like, seven, eight years I didn't fucking go to the dentist because I got fucking tired of going to the fucking dentist every goddamn week. Well, you know what can you do? Shit happens. You have no control over it. And for those that, that are wondering, yes, when the setup is completed, there will be, like, a little desk tour on the podcast. 
I like the fact that there's little drawers. That way I can keep my junk in there. Because everyone knows that everyone that owns a desk, especially guys, you know, you know, I have that one drawer that's just got random fucking wires. <laughs> it's random wires. Because, you know, you see a wire, that, an, a spare wire or something that comes in, like, a, a kit or something. Like, oh, fuck, let me hold on to this. I might need it. I have so many fucking HDMI cords in my fucking uh, cabinet. It's fucking ridiculous. Now I can take them out of the cabinet. Or not a cabinet. What's the fucking thing called? It's not a shelf, but it's like a... It's, a, it's like a little six... It's like a storage little thing where it has, like, six drawers. That's, like, backed up against the wall in my closet because I need to clear up some, uh, space. And I'm like, well, the only thing that's in my closet is fucking clothes, so. I could take all those random wires. To be honest, I could probably toss out that fucking thing. Since I got the desk now, I could just toss all my wires and shit in there. But I'm ex I'm excited I'm excited to actually you know be plugged up into the Ethernet too because I've been so used to fucking Wi-Fi my entire life. Well, not my entire life, but majority of it. And I already have plans of like what like first thing I'm fucking doing is I'm installing fucking uh, Command and Conquer because I want to play that son of a bitch on a fucking PC because I can already imagine the thing's gonna run beautiful. Because right now, whenever I do want to play it, I'm running it on my fucking 25-year-old laptop. Surprisingly, it still runs. I don't have it connected to the internet or anything anymore because it's so fucking old. And I doubt it would even be able to run uh, Microsoft on it. So it's literally just a desktop that I play Command & Conquer on. I mean a laptop. I said desktop. That's literally all it's used for. <laughs> I literally deleted everything off it. Uninstalled everything. The only thing that's sitting on the top left hand corner is Command and Conquer. <laughs> and like. After I finished the desk too. When I, I came back in my room. I was just thinking about so many things I could fucking do. Guys. I could fucking record playing fucking VR chat. That would be fucking hilarious. I think that'd be really funny. VR chat would be pretty cool. But I I'll wait till I get some more throwaway money before I get a fucking Oculus because that that shit is is fucking expensive. And Yeah, we're we're going to wait. I'll wait for a good deal to drop because I mean, you know, uh, Oculus and, and all those types of VR headsets, they go down pretty, they go down fairly well during, like, Black Friday and shit. For the most part, anyway. But, um, nothing, nothing really going on with work, nothing, uh, crazy, really. Uh, ah, oh, well... There actually is a, an update about, um, cause lately my job has been coming across a lot of fentanyl heads. For those of you that don't know what fentanyl is, it's, it's a drug that just, it cracks you the fuck out. For those of you on the East Coast, especially that live in like DC, Maryland, uh, remember those people that were high on K-12 and we're out of their fucking minds. That's basically what the fentanyl heads in Vegas are. And we've been seeing a huge increase of them. Like, you know, you have like, you know, some, you know, some homeless people that are like, you know, hey, I'll buy a candy bar, you know, you know, the, those. It, it's been an increase of those. And, you know, the ones who come in and acting like they're talking to themselves and we're like, hey, man, you got to pay for that. I put $20 on the counter already. And I'm like, bro, you got $7 worth of stuff. Don't you want your change? I, I got it already. Oh, I didn't see you go up to the register. You can't see. Oh, okay. I can't see, apparently. <laughs> but, there's been an increase of those because apparently, 
I didn't know that there was a homeless shelter. Like, it's, like, way, way further up. Like, not even near here, but it's, like, a couple of, like, it's, like, two, three miles down the road. I didn't know there was a homeless shelter. Because um, a manager at Circle K, because a lot of times I go there on my lunch break to grab, like, a sandwich or whatever. She told me that she saw, like, a correctional facility bus or whatever drop people off up the street. And then they're slowly migrating their way down to, like, where I work. And then, this is my theory. They're migrating down here. They're hanging out with the other uh, fentanyl heads that hang around my uh, job. Hey, man, you know you could steal from this place, man. They won't do shit. Oh, shit, for real? And, and Mandelo, the, the beer... It's been very popular lately. It's got down to the point where my boss is like, Hey, don't put fucking Modelo on the floor. Because like two nights ago, for like an hour, they've had like four or five fucking walkouts with like 30 fucking packs. They're not stealing the three packs. We keep the three packs out. They don't touch those. Even like the regular ones that have like snuck in when the, when a cashier wasn't looking or whatever, they would like walk back out empty-handed. They're not taking the three packs... They look for the 30 packs. If they don't see any 30 packs, they leave. Here's the crazier part. Is that if we don't have it, they'll go to the gas station next door and see if they got it. If they do, they take it. Vice versa. They go to the gas station. They realize they don't have it. They come down to us. And that's wild. I'm like, for some fucking Modelo? Really? Now, here's my thing. If I'm homeless, and I'm struggling, I'm not taking fucking beer. But then again, it, 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 it it's the drugs. It's like, oh, the drugs are wearing off. I can't get any. Fuck it. I might as well get drunk. I, that's what I'm assuming the mindset is. Because I've even talked to, to uh, Pri about this, and she's like, honey, they're, like, they're fucking meth heads. They, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. I'm like, apparently they do because they know which fucking beer to steal. They know, they, they are doing something. They, they, you know. Like, yeah, they're high as fuck on shit, but they're not fucking stupid. It's like, hey, I'm gonna eat this because it tastes good. I'm gonna take it, you know. And we had another one of those situations where one of my bosses told someone to get out because they stole him before. Got into a huge argument for like five minutes. I don't steal. You got me mistaken for someone else. I ain't never even been here before. I'm not going to steal. I'm not a thief. And then walked up to uh, the front where the register is. Stole like five, six candy bars and walk out. Like... How are you going to argue with someone about what you're not and then turn around and do it when you leave? It's like, hey, great. You not only wasted our time, but then you fucking, you end up stealing anyway. And of course, they have nothing to say after you point that out. Because he took the candy bars to walk out. Like, oh, you're not a thief, but you just walked out with like seven candy bars. What's, what's up with that? The guy didn't say nothing. It's like, no, you're just mad. You're like, well, fuck, I'm going to walk out with something. I guess that's the mindset. That's what I said. I just hate the fucking... I just hate the thieves that's, that start shit, talk shit. Like, bro, can't be in here. Hey, try again later. Why you got to talk shit? And I'm going to say this again. Especially to anyone who's, like, this could be your first episode you're listening for some, you know, for whatever reason. Leave these fucking food service and retail people alone. Do not start shit with these people. I don't rem- I, um, it was a TikTok that one of my coworkers showed me. I don't remember where it was. But it all started with the person claiming that they didn't get everything in their order in the drive-thru. 
started arguing with the uh, McDonald's uh, drive through person, throwing cups, splashing water on them and all that. You know, that person, you know, threw soda or whatever back at them. They pulled around again to throw more shit at them. The woman got so fucking fed up with their shit, she left the restaurants and shot the dude. I don't know if it was, like, a person, like, with someone else or if they were by themselves. But, yeah, the dude did all that. She was like, you know what, fuck this. She got her gun, walked out, confronted the dude at the drive-thru, bam, bam, and shot and killed the guy. Now you're fucking dead and all your and all your family members are saying, How like what happened? How did you die? He got into an argument with a drive thru lady at McDonald's. And he just fucking went berserk and lost it and started throwing shit and cussing at her and all that shit. You know what I do in that situation? If my order like if I ask for, hey, can I get a triple cheeseburger and a large fry? And they give me a small fry, I'm not gonna drive back around. Say hateful shit to the cashier when, number one, the cashier at the drive-thru didn't fucking make it. The fucking cook did. So not not only are you fucking yelling and screaming and throwing shit, you're shooting the fucking messenger. You're not even getting mad at the right fucking person. But because she works at McDonald's, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, he deserved to get shot. I'm not saying that at all. I mean, obviously you shouldn't resort to fucking shooting someone. But there's people out there that you're like, there's people out there that's like, I don't give a fuck if I go to jail, fuck you. There's people out there that fucking work at these restaurants and retail, retail places. Like, you gotta be fucking careful and pick your fucking battles. Don't think because this w- woman, uh, fucking works at McDonald's, she ain't about that life. She Apparently she is. But no, if your order's wrong, just drive into the restaurant. Walk in. Hey, man, I asked for a large fry, uh, but you guys gave me a small. Do you think we can, we could, fi- could we fix that, please? No, like, don't be condescending. Don't be a dick. Just very politely, like, hey, um, I ordered a large fry, but you guys gave me a medium. Um, hey, here's my receipt. Um, could we change that real quick? I appreciate it. You know. Don't fucking pull up to the drive through throwing cups and fucking water at the fucking person. Because you don't know. That person was like, you know what, this is my last day anyway. Fuck this. Just, because fuck, when was it? I don't know if I've talked about this either. But it was like a dude at like a 7-Eleven, I think it was. Group of fucking teenagers talking shit to the uh, cashier uh, dude that's by himself. I, I think it was like a night shift, probably. Starting shit, him and it was like four or five other people. Yeah, man, we'll fuck you up. You ain't about that life. Dude went in the back. He fucking grabbed his fucking pistol, chased the dudes out, and shot at him. I don't know if he killed anybody, but shot at him. And it's like, dude, dude, leave these fucking people alone. Like, granted, I love my job. I love the perks that I get out of it. You know, I'm cool with all my coworkers. I don't have any issues, really. But it's like, I still kind of don't want to be there. Like, in all honesty, even though I would hate a fucking graveyard and overnight shift, I would fucking hate it. But to be honest, if there was a graveyard shift, I would be so tempted to take that shift. Because, dude, I just want to stock, put my earbuds in, and be just left the fuck alone. Because me and uh, one of my bosses talked about it, too. They were like, man, it's like the job itself is not draining at all. And I'm like, yeah, this job's fucking easy. All we got to do is we get the truck, fill the stock, and finish it before Saturday. Because Saturday, you know, everyone and their fucking mom needs fucking help for, with baby shit. Especially people who shop there every fucking Saturday. For coupons and shit. It's like, you know, hey, Thursday, Friday, knock, knock it out, be done. And then we just move shit, you know, find, we'll find something to do. But there's no, there's no time frame to get it done. It's just like, alright, hey, fucking do some backstop. You know, hey, find something to do for eight hours. But it's like, the job itself isn't hard, really. It's the fucking people that make the job hard. As Randall from Clerks once said, 
This job would be so much easier if it wasn't for the fucking customers. And that stays true to this fucking day. To this, to this day! I'm just like, dude, leave these fucking, leave these fucking workers alone. And these are all like, most of the people in the workforce sh- are at least my age. But then you got the fucking next generation of workers who really fucking don't give a shit about their job coming in. You think they're going to give a fuck? Just leave these fucking workers alone. If you need help, look for something. Because I can tell you right now, I've already had this happen to me three times just uh, in the last uh, four days I worked. Where you walk into a store, and instead of fucking looking for it, I mean, I I feel unless you're in a fucking rush. But obviously the two people I've helped were not in a fucking rush. This dude walked through the condiment aisle. And to be honest, I'm a, I'm a little more, uh, I'm kind of a dickhead, but I don't come off as a dickhead about it. Because this dude saw me, and instead of fucking looking, because bro, he was looking for steak sauce. That's literally two shelves above ketchup to your right, or his left, whichever. He walked past the mustard, past the ketchup, and came to, hey man, where's the steak sauce? So, in a very non-sarcastic, you know, dickish voice, oh, hey, man, yeah, you walked right past it, right here on that shelf. Oh. I didn't get a fucking thank you, by the way. But maybe it's because he knew I was, I was kind of, like, low-key being an asshole. Yeah, man, you walked right past it. Maybe if you actually looked, instead of seeing an employee and making a beeline towards me, you would have found your steak sauce. And there's so many fucking times... Where if I'm, like, on the opposite side of the store stocking or whatever, I'm, like, by, like, the pots and plans. I said plans. <laughs> the pots and plans. <laughs> oh, fuck. Matt, words. The pots and pans. They're like, hey, man, you know where the cereal is? And I'm like, hey, man, well, obviously it's not fucking over here because there's fucking no food on this side of the store. But, uh, yeah, it's on the opposite side of the store. Most likely, where you first walked in, you most likely passed it. That's what I want to say. And I have to say something. Is that I understand that people that work in the food industry, like McDonald's, Wendy's, whatever, you guys deal with a lot of shit when it comes down to DoorDashers. I can tell you right fucking now, we have it way worse. Way fucking worse. Cause it ain't like uh like big grocery chains like Albertsons or whatever where they do the shop before you and the DoorDasher comes by and picks it up. At our store, you know, we're a, we're a little market. You know, we're not like a big chain grocery store. We're not like some eighty aisle grocery store. You know, it's a very small little store. You pick up you know what you need, even though people choose the fucking full blown grocery shop there instead of fucking at an actual fucking grocery store. But. DoorDashers got a shop for themselves. And god damn it, I swear to fucking god, these people are so fucking annoying. I mean, you had the one groceries, you know, you have a couple of DoorDashers that come to the store and, you know, they actually fucking look for the shit. But there are so many fucking grocery stores. There's fucking, I don't know if I've talked about this guy before. Dude, like, it's like, we're like 50 episodes in. I'm gonna forget half the shit I talk about from, like, episode one. But there's this guy, there's this DoorDasher that comes in and I swear to fucking god... He does not wash his ass at all. He is the stinkiest motherfucker alive. And when I say stinky, I mean this dude will be in fucking aisle five. And then go up to the front and he'd be gone for five minutes. His stink would still fucking be there. That's how fucking bad. Like, I can't describe the smell. It's like a smell of being outside for too long and you haven't washed your ass in like three days. And it's hot. It's like a hot smell. Like hot garbage. But it's not garbage. It's like decaying body. But it doesn't smell like death. And I've been seeing this dude come in at least three to four times a week. Door dashing. For almost two and a half years that I've been there. And this dude still does not fucking know where anything is. 
And then, God forbid, you tell him, oh, well, we don't have that in stock right now. He'll do the fucking boom. And he's a boomer, too. That's a, that's a added, that's a plus. He'll fucking do the thing where he, like, he holds his head down, his glasses kind of slide down his nose a little bit, and he'd be like, really? And I'm like, yeah, dude, we don't fucking have it. Like, bro, you come in here more than fucking I work here. Like, you should fucking know where, what our stock is. And God forbid, he fucking, like, if we have, uh, like, a pallet out and we're, like, stocking it, a lot of times if he sees whatever's on his list, he'll, he'll grab it. It's like, huh, it's like I'm stocking for you. Have you ever, like, I don't know if, j look up a clip of Ted DiBiase from WWE, WWF. Look up a clip of him doing his laugh. He's like, ah, ha, 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 ha. That's literally how this guy fucking laughs at his own jokes. It's like, I'm stocking for you guys. You should pay me. <laughs> and like, uh, yeah, not funny. You fucking stink. Please leave. Because I've even told my boss, I'm like, can we ban people from the store if they fucking stink? And the crazy part is, here's the fucking crazy part. This is how different between West Coast and East Coast is. No one has fucking told this guy he stinks yet. This dude comes two to four times a week at our store. No employee, no customer has ever said, Hey bro, wash your ass. Or hey man, you fucking stink. No one has fucking said a thing. I swear to God, if this dude were to come to a giant food, like in fucking northeast DC, this dude would get fucking clowned on. He'd be like, hey, 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 hey Mo, you fucking stink, dog. I guarantee fucking tea it. People aren't afraid to fucking speak their mind back home, but from here, for some reason, here's two things I've noticed about the West Coast, is that a lot of people keep their opinions to themselves a little bit more, not as much, but it's more held back, or I guess people are more kinder about it, and... People always say, hey, take let's take this outside. Because I swear to God, back home, if you fight somebody, it's on site. It ain't no, hey, it ain't no fucking Dragon Ball Z show. Huh? Let's take this somewhere else where we got more room. Like, no, it's fucking on site. You start with shit with someone at a fucking Walmart, you're fucking fighting down aisle 5, 6, 7, and 8. It ain't no, let's take this outside type shit. Or... I'll wait till you clock out. Like, no. Fucking back home, if you pick a fight with someone at work, they're fucking beating your ass while they're making fucking nine fifty an hour. Type shit. I'm, I'm getting off topic here. But I shit you not. I think the worst DoorDasher I've ever seen come to my job is when I was running the register one day. And this guy came in. Hey, you work here? While well, I'm standing behind the register, mind you. Yeah, I work here. You know, I'm just I'm just standing behind the register for just because. And he shows me a list of shit on his DoorDash, and I'm like, in the in my mind, I'm like, oh fucking here we go. He showed me like, uh, like lip liner. Oh, that's right here up front. Like eyelash glue. That's right up here up front. Press on nails. Hey man, right here up front. All the makeup right here is up front. He showed me some more shit. Right up here up front, dude. All the makeup. Obviously, I'm trying to be professional about it. All the makeup right here is up front. All right here. Right here. Then he showed me balloons. That's in the party aisle. Showed me an air pump for balloons. Party aisle. All that is in the party aisle. And I just walked away. Because I'm like, bro, if you're looking for three different boxes of cereal, chances are all three of those boxes are in the same fucking aisle. It ain't like Captain Crunch is on aisle three, Frosted Flakes is in aisle 20. It, it, it doesn't work that way. Remember like what I said earlier? Hey man, if ketchup and mustard are on aisle 10, good chance fucking steak sauce is going to be in that same fucking aisle. You know, use common sense. I swear to God, I think, like, my job is a simulation. I swear to fucking Christ. 
But yeah, DoorDashers are... It, it got so bad that all my bosses were like, Hey, if you have a DoorDasher that's literally coming up to you for every single fucking thing, do not help them. And God only knows, it, it, it's, it's more worse at night because you have someone that puts in a DoorDash order like 15 minutes before they close... The DoorDasher gets there five minutes before they close. And they're like, hey, man, I'm still shopping for my DoorDash order. And it's like, bro, we're closed. It's like five minutes past closing. Dude, you got to go. Oh, well, I got to finish this order. Two, oh, motherfucking well. Get another order, dude. It's, it's just wild. And it pisses me off because, like, bro, are you going to give me half of your fucking tip? Because I'm basically doing all the shopping for you. Because I remember last time I personally dealt with a dasher. Like, I wasn't, like, rude. But I jokingly said, hey man, you're going to give me half your tip? <laughs> he didn't, the guy didn't find it funny. He was just, like, looked at me like, the fuck? Like, no. But I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm. I was like, oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, man. And, like, I'm, I'm trying to play it off, but, like, I really wanted to be a fucking asshole to the guy. Because the guy had, like, 15 items on his list. And he kept coming up to me. And that's another thing, too. Is that if you work at a grocery store and DoorDashers have to shop, you know, for, the for like, whoever they're ordering for instead of you doing it for them. They will, if they talk to you, they will literally come up to you for every single fucking thing. Because there's been plenty of times where I've had to deal with a DoorDasher that walked past eight nine of my fucking co-workers and make a beeline to me and i'm like like he'll walk across the store hey man uh i need fucking uh a bowl dude you walk past like three other of my co-workers you could ask them why the fuck are you coming all the way up to me on the other side of the store you know it's just really fucking annoying thankfully i haven't had to tell someone like nah man i ain't helping you it's happened. It's happened once where my boss was like, "Oh, are you door dashing?" Oh yeah, yeah, man, I, I can't help you. And the guy and I and I asked him, I was like, "Well, how many items did he, did they have?" He's like, "It was basically a whole goddamn grocery order, like thirty items." And he's like, "Dude, I'm working on truck right now. I'm not gonna stop working on truck to fucking help you find thirty fucking items." Like, dude, if look for it. If you can't find it, then come find me. Like, we're gonna get behind because you want to fucking you want to get your fucking tip. Which, I mean, I get it, but I'm like, dude, you're slowing our labor down for a fucking order, you know, and can't do that. You know, we got shit we gotta do too, just like you do, you know. Hey, you gotta, get, you know, you gotta get paid for this order, you know, we gotta get paid to fucking finish this truck, you know what I mean? All I say is look for this shit first. Don't fucking walk in and then grab the nearest fucking person that works there and then give them your whole fucking list. You know? But, it's now time for Pat's Corner. Pat, send me some stuff. And, um, we're gonna check out the list. There's a couple of things here, actually. Oh, I gotta open. Fuck, am I even logged in? Inst I don't think I ever use Instagram on my... No, I don't. Oh, this is in Spanish. I'm not going to play in case there's music. Huh. So, they're, uh... They're breast implants, but they light up. Light up implants. And you can change the color. So, ladies... And, and, hold on, let me, uh, can I translate stuff on this page? I don't think I can, because it's not like, uh, the only word I can really read is the, uh, the word silic uh, silicone. Oh, is silicone with LED now a new fashion? Are we already in 2077? That's what the status says. I had to translate it. So yeah, you can get light up implants. <laughs> that actually might be kind of fun. 
I mean, I'm all for uh, nice natural tits, but, I mean, hey, if you want some light-up titties, I don't know how that would, uh, yeah. What the fuck is Sheen? Oh, I guess it's like, uh, dude, I do not know my fashion. I'm, I'm not, I'm the least fashionate person ever. That's why my closet is like 95% black shirts. The only time you see me is like either like video game shirts or like, uh, fucking, uh, Ray merch. Yo, by the way, shout out to frameratemerch.com, man. Because, uh. The wife got me uh, one of his shirts for my birthday, and goddamn, it is a comfortable ass fucking shirt. It's the the red brown crown shirt. And she got me a a matching hat that says streamer on it. I'm like, yeah. So best believe I will be rocking that hat too when um I come back to streaming once the uh, PC setup. Pat uh, tagged me and my wife in this, and was like, I can see you guys doing this. Christ. Oh, by the way, Death of Slim Shady. I I haven't listened to the whole album yet, but goddamn, some of them tracks are fucking slap. I would love to fucking play it, but I can't because I'll get fucking copyrighted. Interscope will be like, hey man, give me my fucking money. Hang on. Ah, that, that, that music. Um, what the fuck? Okay, so, what did Pat say to this? He just said, Matt, add it to the list, okay? <laughs> so, they're like little jewels that you hang on your armpit hair. It It's a women accessory. Or I guess it could be men. Men can rock these too. I feel like that would hurt. You clipping shit onto your armpit hair? I mean, the charms are cute. It's like little strawberries, little stars, little potions. The charms are cute, but... I don't know if us as a society are ready for armpit fashion. I mean, you know, you got some of the people that are super into armpits. You know, you, you guys know who you are. Don't be ashamed. We don't, we don't kick shame at MTFM. Me personally, I'm not for it. Now I know there's some women that don't women that don't shave their armpits, and hey, if you don't want to shave your armpits, hey, let them grow. But this, like the the charms on your armpit hair, I feel like that's gonna fucking hurt. God forbid you like stretch and they get caught on something and yank your arm, dude. That is gonna fucking hurt. That's going to be painful. But that's going to be a no for me, dog. That's a no for me. And that is... it. It's more of like, what the fuck? But I mean, hey, for all I know, it could be an actual fucking thing. You, you, you never know. What the fuck is this? Juice, but I am not here to judge you, so I wait. Hang on, I gotta reset it. It just, it's just titled, Have You Ever Wondered? I'm not the only one he tagged in this, but I'm just curious. Have you ever wondered how many times you would need to off in order to fill a bathtub with what comes out? 
Well, I'm not sure why you would want to fill a bathtub with wee wee sauce or taco juice, but I am not here to judge you, so I put my best people on it, and here is what we came up with. We are first going to cover males, and what it would take to fill a bathtub with baby gravy. A standard bathtub can hold around 80 gallons of willy milk for those of you who like using freedom units, or 300 litres of man chowder for those of you who like using the devil's measurements. Now the average male normally produces between 1.5 to 5 millilitres of wee wee snot per happy moment, which means males would need to d**k off between 18,000 and 60,000 times in order to fill the bathtub. Females, on the other hand, produce anywhere from a few drops to half a litre every time they polish their pearl. This means a female could technically pull off filling the bathtub with taco juice from only 600 sessions, but only if every session had a really crazy waterfall level finish. Huh. That's, uh... Alright. And that's it for Pat's Quarter. <laughs> there was one, but it looked like the person deleted it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's information I did not uh, really need to know in life, but now I know. Oh my god. Now it's bothering me because what if you used multiple males? How, how, how long would... You, you, you didn't use the math on that and I kind of want to know now. <laughs> because <laughs> now I'm just going down a rabbit hole. How many, how many guys would it take to uh, fill a bathtub? <laughs> Pat, I don't know how the fuck you find this shit, bro, but fucking keep them coming. But that that's gonna be it for me, kids. That's I literally have the most boring life in the fucking world. But hey, I appreciate you guys uh, hearing me uh, jabber and, and 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 stuff for like the last hour. But as always, you know you guys know what the fuck to do. You guys are sm smart adults. Click the bell, ring it, personalize it, however you feel like fucking doing. Or if you just want to subscribe, to just. Fuck, dude, hitting the like alone fucking supports the fucking channel, you know what I mean? And of course, if you haven't yet, check out the gaming channel. Uh, I'm more likely to upload content on there, even though currently I'm kind of on a mini break at the moment. I'm just recording, like, you know, shit here and there until I actually find, like, a good day to just sit down and have a long session of just nothing but recording. But, uh, yeah, click anything you see on the screen, and, um, I'll see you guys next time.